In India, there's a job known as manual scavenging, where workers clean out sewers filled with waste using their bare hands. For many in India, defecating indoors is considered unacceptable as it's believed to defile the divine path, leading to the widespread practice of open defecation. An estimated 620 million people in India still practice open defecation, which is why manual scavengers are needed. These workers descend into the sewers, close their eyes, hold their breath, and sink to the bottom, treating the filthy water as if it were nothing. Once at the bottom, they dig out the garbage and sewage, blocking the drains with their bare hands. After their buckets are full, their companions pull them back up. This process is repeated many times, but the sewage is not the worst part. The real dangers are the toxic gases and sharp objects like glass shards and needles scattered throughout the sewers. Cuts, infections, and poisoning are common, and death is a constant risk. According to India's 2017 official statistics, a manual scavenger dies every five days on average. Even though manual scavenging is legally banned in India, the government doesn't recognize these workers. So when they die, they receive no compensation. Sadly, their fate often remains unchanged, no matter how much they study or try to escape this work. A young man named Sunni shared his story in an interview. His father was a manual scavenger, and Sunni worked hard to avoid the same path, earning six degrees. Despite his efforts, Sunni now leads a double life. By day, he's a PhD student in social psychology, but by night, he works as a manual scavenger. He says he could find a better job, but that would only make the higher castes more wary of the lower castes rising up. Sunni doesn't want his success to cause more hardship for the Dalit community. Even if he found another job, his Dalit identity would still create obstacles for him. India has made attempts to abolish the caste system before. For instance, during the Mughal Empire, the rulers tried to replace the caste system with Islam. However, this provoked strong resistance from the higher castes. And before long, the Mughal Empire collapsed. In India, there's a group known as the caste rebels who make a living by stealing electricity. Their story goes like this. In July 2012, three of India's major power grids failed in quick succession, plunging 670 million people into darkness, a world record for the largest blackout. In Kanpur, this problem is particularly with electricity and short supply, power is naturally prioritized for the higher castes. But on the streets of Kanpur, many have taken matters into their own hands, armed with just a pair of pliers and a sharp set of teeth. Stealing electricity here is a common occurrence, so much so that even monkeys have learned to mimic the act. Singh is a true expert at stealing electricity. Just look at the tangled mess of wires he works with. Each one could be deadly, a single mistake, and touching the wrong wire could be fatal. That's why some say there are no mediocre electricians in India. They've already met Brahma. This isn't just talk. Every year, at least 2,000 people in India die from electric shocks. But Singh isn't afraid. He has his own trick. He claims that if he holds his breath while stealing electricity, the current will think he's already dead and pass him by. In Hinduism, killing someone near death is a sin, and Singh believes electricity follows the same rule. Of course, this is not something anyone should try. Singh offers a lifetime of his electricity theft services for just a one-time fee. Many of his clients come from lower castes. And they say that without Singh, they wouldn't have the power they need to keep going. Singh sees himself as a modern-day Robin Hood. He figures if the rich can steal electricity from the state, why shouldn't he steal it from them? And not only does he do it, but he even manages to pin the bill on them. In Kanpur, a city with 3 million people, there are fewer than 500,000 registered electricity meters. This means that about 2 million people are stealing electricity. The government tried to crack down on this by sending officials to deal with the issue, even cutting off power to entire neighborhoods. But the electricity thieves weren't phased. They just tapped into high voltage power from other areas. In a final desperate move, the government shut off power to the entire city. This angered both the rich and the poor who flooded the streets in protest forcing the government official to retreat. What seemed like a farce was actually a silent rebellion against the caste system. Singh said he's not afraid of death and wants to help more people. Meanwhile, the manual scavengers say they hope to die sooner, perhaps as a way to escape their caste in the next life. This reflects a belief in a cycle of reincarnation within the caste system, with many hoping to be reborn into a better caste, away from the delete label.